It is time for my annual best and worst horror movies of the year, and I rank them all. I rank them all, so I will have commentary on every single horror movie release in 2023. However, I did not get to all of them, naturally. This is my first year of being a parent. My daughter was born one year ago, as of tomorrow, uh, because I'm filming this on the 13th. So yeah, first year of being a parent, I feel like I did a good job. I tried my best to see as many movies as I could. So no, I didn't get to all of them, but I got to 32 of them. So we're gonna be ranking 32 2023 horror movies. And just a quick little commentary on the year as a whole, I don't think it was that strong when it came to movies in general, to be honest. There were a few hits, there were a few good movies that came out of this year, don't get me wrong, but having a couple standouts of the year doesn't necessarily make it a great year. I feel like last year was iconic. Like I feel like 2022 horror was just, it's unbeatable. It was just amazing. And this year wasn't terrible, but I did watch a lot of movies I didn't like. So I won't spoil any of the movies in case you are still wanting to watch these movies. And I will try to list where they are all streaming, if they're streaming, you know, in the little corner over here. And if you can't find them on your streaming site, luckily I'm working with NordVPN on this video. So content on streaming sites tends to look differently depending where you're located. But with NordVPN, you can unlock streaming anywhere in the world, no matter what country you live in and they make it super easy to connect to any country with just a single click and then you have access to all of their streaming. Also a VPN can help you share your accounts across multiple households without paying a little extra sneaky fee. Now not only is NordVPN a great tool for this but they also help to protect your data and privacy through their threat protection which is always running in the background even if you're not connected to a VPN server. This conceals your IP address, blocks your virtual location, and helps protect you from malware and cyber attacks. And to be honest Honest, hackers are just getting more and more stealthy these days, but you can use one NordVPN account on up to six devices. So all of your devices and technology is protected. Plus you can access streaming anywhere, anytime. So make sure to go to nordvpn.com slash possessed by horror to get the exclusive Christmas deal of a two year plan with a huge discount plus four bonus months for free. And it's completely risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. So in these videos, as you know, if you've been around for multiple years, I like to work my way from worst to best. So we're gonna start with the worst horror movies of 2023, in my opinion. Please keep that in mind. As always, this is just my opinion and I guarantee you will disagree with me at some point in this video. It is just meant to be, you know? Out of 32 movies, there's no way we have the same exact ranking and that's okay. So coming in at last place, at one and a half stars. I didn't have any one star ratings this year. Last year was a different story. The worst movie of 2023 to me was Snowfalls. Now, I don't wanna harp on a movie too much when it was very apparent that it was self-funded indie movie. I understand um, that, you know, I could not make better. However, I just feel like there was, there was so much unbelievability about this movie where it was hard to even immerse myself. It didn't have anything to do, not necessarily, with like the bad acting or the bad uh, effects, special effects or anything like that. Um, but it had to do with the overall story. I did do a whole review on Snowfalls. Any individual review that I have, I will try to link. Well, I can only do five cards in the video, so I'll link it down below in the description box. So I don't want to be too negative about it because I don't feel like it deserves that kind of negativity, but it was technically the worst movie I watched this year. It just wasn't great. Next up, we have another kind of indie movie. Um, I think this had a very limited theatrical release, but that was Fear. Again, another one and a half stars. This one is ranked a little bit higher because I do think the execution was a little bit better, was a little bit better acted and also a better concept. I was actually interested in Snowfalls because it's about a you know group of friends that go on a trip and they get stranded in the snow and they believe the snow is contaminated and they're all losing their minds. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. I thought fear was a little bit better. It was supposed to be people dying in the ways of their phobias, like their biggest fear. That's how they would probably die in the movie. And I thought that concept was pretty cool. Again, it's about a group of friends that go on a trip together. We got a lot of those movies this year for some reason. I feel like every year we get those, to be honest. So a little bit better uh, in terms of concept and whatnot and execution, but still not great. It was actually disappointing because I was excited based on the premise and the trailer wasn't terrible either. And it just fell really, really flat for me. Next up, we have There's Something Wrong With The Children. 
Uh, this got a two stars, so we're out of the one star ish rating. Uh, now we're on to two. Uh, again, this one fell really flat. And to be honest, I think it's the children's fault, ironically, because there is something wrong with the children. They're not believable. I am not typically a huge fan of like the evil children pl plot line anyway. So like that's not really effective for me personally. But I had a little bit higher expectation when it came to this. There were some bigger, not bigger actors necessarily, you know, some like B actors in it. So I had more expectation for this one than other movies maybe to come out, the indie movies anyway, because this one's still kind of like an independent release. There's really nothing to it. There's not anything to talk about. I think I did a whole video on it miraculously because there's nothing to say. It was just not my movie and I don't recommend it. Next up, we have one of the latest horror movies to come out this year. It's A Wonderful Knife. I just did a whole review on this. My last video is the review for this movie, but it was bad. It was just bad and it was a theatrical release too i didn't watch it in theaters i watched it on shutter is it fun for some people sure i'm not here to you know wipe out anyone's fun when it comes to watching this movie i get it okay these movies are not for me i talked about it in the review this is just one of those comedy time travel mind bending slasher movies and they're not my my jam. I don't like them. Happy Death Day, um, Totally Killer, Freaky, um, even Final Girls, you know, movies like that. It's a very specific type of horror comedy and I'm not a fan. And It's a Wonderful Knife was pretty bad. I gave it two stars. Next up we have a movie that I never wanted to watch, to be honest. I saw the trailer for it and I was like, no thank you. I just can tell it's not gonna be a movie that I would enjoy. So I begrudgingly watched it and I know that's not the attitude to go into a movie with and I know I probably should have had a more open mind about it, but I didn't. The only thing I had an open mind about was Nicolas Cage as Dracula. And yes, I'm talking about Renfield. Again, it's a little comedy horror. We have so many of those this year, I feel. I am just disappointed by all of them. I watch them, I try to have an open mind. I really, really do, but I just know before watching it. I just know my taste really well at this point, and I know before watching it, it's not going to be a movie I would enjoy. And that's how I felt about Renfield, and I was correct. Two stars. However, I was happy with Nicolas Cage's Dracula. I wish he was in it more and I wish that was the main character focus. I don't even know if I like Nicholas Holt as an actor, to be honest. I like the menu, but beyond that, I don't know that I really enjoy him or his acting. We're getting all the negativity out of the way in the beginning of this video and I promise it ends on a high note and I will get into positivity very, very shortly. We gotta get through the worst and the mid movies and then we'll get into all my positive thoughts of the year. Next up is one that I need to vent about for a second, okay? Last Voyage of the Demet Demeter, Demeter. I mean, if I had to give awards, for 2023, Last Voyage of Demeter would be the most disappointing out of the year. I didn't go see it in theaters. I didn't have like too high expectations about it. Um, and I decided to wait to watch it at home. And I'm really happy I did that. And I actually did think the plot sounded cool. It's right. basically a ship and a crew that don't know that they're harboring Dracula. And it's a very small crew. And then, you know, of course, things start happening. First of all, one of the reasons why I was very excited, not very excited, I had high hopes for this movie that it would at least be a solid movie. How in the world did they fumble it that bad? How did they do that? Because it had all the potential in the world, right? Javier Botet played Dracula. Tell me why I couldn't tell that Javier Botet was Dracula. They could have used any old man, any guy, could have played Dracula because of the CG that they put on him. I thought that he was gonna be like a weird figure. Use Javier Botet's abilities, right? He plays creepy creatures all the time because of his frame and just his limbs and whatnot. I couldn't tell at all in this movie. We hardly got to see anything, let alone Dracula's like face and whatnot. It was so dark. Our room, our living room was pitch black when we watched this movie because we realized very soon that it was a dark, dark movie. And I think they were trying to hide the bad CG effects. I think that's what was going on. So even with a pitch black room, we still could not see what was going on. Another thing that really pissed me off about this movie 
was the quick cuts. I think there was a cut every half second to one and a half seconds. It was so obnoxious. Once I noticed it, I could not stop noticing how fast the cuts are. Again, it could be a way to disguise certain negative aspects about the movie, whether the performances weren't great, the ADR wasn't great, or the CGI wasn't great. I could not stand the amount of cuts. I understand our attention span is getting lower, you know, getting smaller, but do we need to have a cut like that, cuts like that in a movie? Like, I feel like when we sit down to watch an hour and a half movie or two hours, we understand what we're getting into. We don't need harsh cuts every two seconds, if that, if not every half a second. Anyway, two stars, wasn't for me. Uh, highly, highly disappointed in that movie. So the last movie in the worst category, also at two stars, was Infinity Pool. This was a more mainstream movie, I would say, and I watched it on Hulu, um, obviously starring Mia Goth, and so I was excited. However, I did not know just how bizarre it was going to be, and it just, it wasn't for me, you know? I think it's a little too weird. I'm not into weird like that. I think that movie is weird for weird's sake, and I didn't really get it. I don't get it. Now let's talk about the mid movies. Movies, all of these ranked right at two and a half out of five stars, just right in the middle. Neither here nor there. Not good, not great, not bad, not terrible. Just, they were they were a movie, you know? They were, just, they were movies. First in this category, we have Missing. Um, I have never seen Searching. Now on first impression, I thought I would enjoy this movie because it's filmed like Unfriended or The Den where it's someone's entire computer screen. But this one is just so over the top, it becomes unbelievable at some points. Towards the end, man, with the, the ending and stuff, it's just too much. I think you really need to dumb down the story and the plot for a movie like this to work. So it just didn't hook me, you know? Um, and I just was bored throughout most of it. And it just was an overachiever of a movie. Next we have Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Again, it, it was a movie, it was just there. It wasn't bad, it was well executed. Um, you know, I like the idea of you know, a young Judd Crandall and the kind of origin story of the Pet Cemetery, but it didn't do anything with it. It never impressed me, not once. It was the most basic, straightforward movie and wasn't necessary. Next, this is right where I would rank Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, it was fine. It was fine. I enjoyed it more than the other two in this category so far. It was fine. Ironically, I enjoyed the Josh Hutcherson storyline and him and his younger sister. I enjoyed that more than like the Freddy stuff, you know, the, the Freddy's, the animatronics, the horror and things. I was impressed with the amount of horror. I didn't expect that because I thought this was more like geared towards younger people. And I mean, that is still the case. Um, I think 90% of audiences for this movie was under 30 years old. So that's still true. Um, so you, the, for that fact, I was impressed with what they managed to put in the movie as far as horror goes. Um, I thought it was gonna be very, uh, not a lot going on with that or like implied off screen, things like that. So it was fine, it was fine. I didn't hate it, but I am not the target audience for a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So I fully expected to be around this, you know, place in this ranking. Next we have The Nun 2. Again, it's just better than The Nun, I suppose. But it's just, it's missing a lot for me. It's missing a lot of horror. It was just cliche jump scares and at times cool visuals and I liked one scare towards the end with a staircase, you know what I'm saying? But beyond that, it was a lackluster movie. It was just, it was nothing to me. It was just there. Next up, we have The Outwaters, another really, really bizarre movie that I thought I was going to love because it's found footage. I actually enjoyed about the first half of this movie until you just couldn't see anything. You just, there was a point in time you saw nothing. There was nothing going on until you saw too much and it got too weird for me. And I was like, mm, not for me. It was fine for a while. I enjoyed the artistic choices going on, um, but another one that just kind of threw in some weirdness for weird's sake and got really extreme out of nowhere. I was blindsided by that. So 
So this one isn't necessarily a mid movie in the sense that it's like neither here nor there, it's just a movie. It was shocking, not in a good way, but I liked half of it. So it gets an extra star for me um, for that, so. And then finally, the last movie in the mid category is The Boogeyman. I liked this more upon first viewing. I watched this in theaters and I think that helped. Had I seen this at home, I don't think it would have had as great of an impact. Um, it's a fine movie. This is one where it is just a movie though. Basically, you're straightforward, run of the mill, easy for beginners, a good beginner horror movie, but beyond that, nothing really impressive. We have a lot of just okay movies uh, in this category. These all rate three stars. Three is my most given rating on Letterboxd, I believe. Um, so most movies fall into a three star category. So this isn't necessarily a negative. Um, these were a little bit better than others this year, but they're still just okay. First up, we have Sick. This one was highly impressive, actually. This is a uh, pandemic horror movie, if you will. Again, friends traveling together on a trip to the a house in the middle of nowhere. And this one was surprising in a really, really good way. I was very shocked at how much this was a fun movie and took a turn that I was not anticipating. So yeah, it got three stars. Otherwise, it's not the best acted. It's still an independent movie and I don't know, there were things missing from it, I think. Next up we have Influencer. So this was a Shudder movie and this one was actually pretty decent as well. I mean, again, it's not a lot to write home about, but for it being kind of a smaller budget movie, I liked where it went. And you know, with the twists and turns and things, I was actually really happy with that because I thought it was going to be pretty predictable and it ended up not being predictable at all. So that was really good. Next we have Megan. I don't love this movie and the more I sit on it, I really don't like this movie that much. And it's here because it was fine. I have appreciation for this. Does it really deserve to be in the okay rating as far as my opinion goes? Probably not. I think it does need to go down a category into mid. Um, but I decided to give it that extra half star to put it in okay. I don't know why. It just feels appropriate for this movie. It was fine. It was fine. I wanted so much more from it. I did watch the unrated version with that's supposed to have like more gore and stuff. Where was that? Where was the gore? It's the unrated, it's supposed to have more. Um, it did technically have more, but it wasn't a lot. I wish they pushed it farther. Again, I did a whole review on it. You can watch it. Um, it's just, I. this isn't my kind of doll AI type horror movie. And genuinely, I think the Child's Play remake did it better. I'm sorry. Next, we have Totally Killer horror comedy wasn't my cup of tea, but it was fine. Like I liked the execution of it um, and the where the story went. It takes place in the 80s. Um, you know, a girl travels back in time and meets her mom at a young age when her mom was in high school. Again, classic time travel slasher movie, comedy. Not sure what's up with that genre. Like it's becoming more and more a thing, um, but I've decided I don't like it. So that's where Totally Killer goes. It was fine. It was okay. Next we have The Pope's Exorcist. Wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. Maybe it should even go up a little bit higher um, because there were definitely moments where I was like, this movie's actually pretty good. And then there were moments where I was like, oh no, it's a little bit cheesy. Cliche, of course. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be like this year's bad exorcism movie, and technically it was. Like it's, I think, you know, it fits in that category. It's not great. I don't know, I was more impressed with it than I initially thought I would be. Speaking of exorcism movies, the next one, Exorcist Believer. I did end up watching this one. Again, it was fine. I liked it more than I thought I would because I saw a lot of people talking about it and it didn't seem to be all that positive, but I thought it wasn't that bad. There's one sequence in particular towards the end that gave it a whole other star for me. And that's what pushed it up to being an okay movie. I would never rewatch it. I don't think it really was necessary at all in the franchise of The Exorcist. So I will never revisit it, but it was fine. It was, I didn't hate it as much as I initially thought I would. You'd think I am a huge hater of horror because all these movies, I'm like, I didn't think I'd like it. I didn't think I'd like, it. it's just the year, man. I don't enjoy the movies coming out this year. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next up we have Insidious 5. 
I liked it more than I think some people like it. Um, I enjoyed it in the theater. I thought it was, you know, a solid installment. Did it feel a little disjointed? Yeah, um, it was Patrick Wilson's uh, directorial debut, I believe, and so it did feel a little bit different from the others. I thought it was fine though. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the experience. The jump scares in this got me more than I think any movie have ever, you know, affected me when it comes to the jump scares. I don't know what it was with this movie. I jumped so bad. I jumped so bad I spilled my water. I talk about that in my review for it. I literally spilled my water cup on myself when I watched this. I am not that person. I am not that person. I am more sensitive to jump scares now than other, ever. I don't know why. Anyway, if you like jump scares, you would love Insidious 5 because man, they are, it's full of it. Would I rewatch it? I might rewatch it if I was doing a marathon of Insidious movies. I thought it was decent and probably, I probably would rewatch it. Next up, we have Hell House LLC Origins, The Carmichael Manor. Um, this one ended up being really good. I was actually pretty happy with this one. I liked the horror element. It feels very close to the original when it comes to the actual horror elements. I haven't seen two or three from Hell House. I've heard they're very bad, but generally it seems like people like this movie and I see why. I think it was done really, really well. I wasn't sure if the connection back to the origins of Hell House was really that strong. I feel like that was still a little bit forced and disjointed, so that's why it's just at a three. But in terms of film style, obviously it's found footage and execution of everything. Um, performances were fine. They were okay, uh, kind of believable. Uh, it was okay. It was good in that regard, but the horror was good. I enjoyed it. A lot of daytime shots too in it, which I actually really liked. Next up, we have Evil Dead Rise fine movie. It was good. I liked it. I gave it like an average review, I would say. Uh, it didn't impress me as much as the Evil Dead movie from 2013. There were definitely some things that were lacking in this movie, and I had high expectations. This is one of those situations I was excited about it. I was anticipating it to be really, really good. It did not go the route that I thought it would with it being in LA. It might as well not have been in LA. Like it might as well have been in the middle of nowhere because they were pretty much still isolated in this building from their neighbors and from the rest of the world. So it really didn't matter the location. I thought the location was going to add a lot more to the story and it just didn't. So that was kind of disappointing. Last up for the okay category, and then we're gonna get into the best of the best. Well, the good and then the best. Uh, so the last okay movie of the year was VHS 85. This one, I was actually pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed as much as I did um, because I was not a fan of 99, which was a huge disappointment. 94 was good. I remember liking 94, um, but 99 really flopped for me, so 85, I had no hopes for it because for one, it's another VHS movie, yet another one, but also it's set in 1985. Not my era, not my era, you guys know that. But I was pleasantly surprised. It's rated highest in this whole okay category for a reason. Like I actually really enjoyed a lot of the shorts in this movie. Let's talk about the good movies of the year, shall we? There are five in this category and these are the ones that are ranked three and a half stars. First up we have Brightwood. This one I think you're gonna be surprised that I ranked so high, but I was very impressed with what they managed to do with such a small budget. I really do appreciate movies like this that are made, you can tell, with a lot of passion and with a very, very low budget. And this is one of those situations where it's executed really well, in my opinion. Also, I recognize I'm a little bit biased with this movie because of the setting. The setting was really effective for me and I, so I'm in the process of writing a short story collection and literally one of my stories is just like this movie. And I now I don't know if I can write that story. It's the first story I ever wrote for this book that I'm writing, and it's almost the exact same thing, almost. And now I feel like I can't go through with it, um, but that's okay. I don't hold it against them, obviously. I'm not mad about it because I thought it was cool to see a concept that I had thought of for myself come to life in a movie. So to me that added like a, a fun aspect, a fun layer of it. And I genuinely really liked the performances of this couple. I thought it was really well done. It's basically this couple who's kind of stuck in this loop of, you know, they're on this run together in the woods and they just keep getting stuck in this loop and soon they start discovering new things and 
there might be other people in the woods. I don't know. I really like when a movie like this that has a lower budget knows when to be more reserved when it comes to story. This is, I think, how you can do a really low budget story but make it kind of supernatural or a little bit strange where you don't know what's going on. I was on the edge of my seat for a lot of this movie. And so I really think it was impressive what they did with this movie and made it more believable because it was such a simple story, yet kept that tense intensity and suspense and horror throughout. I thought it was really well done. Next we have Skinamarink. This is, I know, not for everyone. Like this one was very polarizing this year. Um, I feel like every year we get one or two movies that are very polarizing amongst fans. And this was one of them. A lot of people say it's boring. A lot of people say it was really effective. I was one of those that it was effective for. I enjoyed this. I think setting matters for this. This is one of those you cannot just watch for fun, like, you you know, without fully immersing yourself into it. It's kind of like Blair Witch Project. You really do have to sit down, turn the lights off and really immerse yourself. But even still, it's totally fair to think that it's not for everyone. This was a very experimental, weird horror movie, but this is the kind of weird that I enjoy. Like, I like this kind of weird. Very, very unsettling for me. Like, it was jarring at times. And I loved the simplicity of the horror it was so simple yet so horrific and effective. Next we have No One Will Save You. This is the alien home invasion that came out this year on Hulu. I'm impressed. I was pleasantly surprised. I had no expectations going into this movie. I just saw people were talking about it. I saw it was on Hulu. I decided to watch it and I was thoroughly impressed. I love that there's no dialogue in the movie. Um, I love when people do that kind of thing if it's done well. And I think in this one it was. The casting was really good. I like the uh, way that they told the story without any dialogue. Very, very impressed. Next we have Scream 6. Um, you know, it's a little bit sad that this is going to be the last Scream movie ever. Maybe. At least to me. I don't see the franchise continuing after what had happened with Melissa Barrera getting fired um, over her views of Palestine. I just don't think that was fair at all, obviously. And so it's a bummer that Scream 7 is now, you know, not going to be something that I'm going to be watching. But Scream 6 was good. I had a lot of fun in the theater watching this one. And I think it's a solid installment to the franchise. And I... The reason why it's not like one of my favorites, I well, I mean, I think the originals are always gonna be the better ones anyway, but I just didn't love the killer in this one and the reveal. I thought it was a little lame, to be honest. So that was a little bit disappointing, but the rest of it I thought was a fun time. And the last good movie of the year, I'm bummed it doesn't go in Beth's, to be honest, because usually his movies do but M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. Can you believe that came out this year? Knock at the Cabin was actually the first movie I saw in theaters after I gave birth. It feels like forever ago. I will always love M. Night Shyamalan movies. Uh, there's only been like one that I haven't liked, so I this was no surprise to me that it was ra ranked so high in fifth place overall of the whole year. Um, I love this. I've rewatched it since. It holds up. It's, it's a great movie, but I don't think it was as good as it could have been because I read the book. And whenever you read the source material, I feel like the movie can be that much more lacking. You know what I mean? Because the book is usually better. And the book, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, which the movie is based on, is better. So if you like Knock at the Cabin, read the book. There's some things in there I wish they stuck with in the movie. Okay, best of the best movies of the year. There are four top contenders this year. Three of them have four stars. Only one movie this year got a five star for me. Last year, I think two movies got five stars. This year, only one deserves five stars. But coming in at fourth place, we have Cobweb. This one blew me away. I'm obsessed with it. I bought it on DVD as soon as I could. Will be a yearly October watch for me for sure with the Halloween uh, atmosphere and everything. It was just my movie, like my kind of horror. It was so good. So the next one is a controversial one to include, but I did want to include it just for your reference because I didn't end up doing a review on it for a reason, and that is Thanksgiving. Now, Spyglass Entertainment is the company that was behind Scream 7 and the ones that fired Melissa Barrera over her views on Palestine, as I mentioned. Um, they also did Thanksgiving, and Eli Roth um, has also been 
posting things that are pro-Israel in this time. So I personally didn't feel comfortable promoting the movie at the time of its release and doing a review while it was still in theaters, um, just because it's not necessarily something I want to support. I saw it before um, I knew any of that information, but for your reference, I did want to include it in my rankings and not ignore the movie completely. That's just my personal choice uh, in including it, but it came in third overall for the year, which was very surprising to me because it is more on the comedy side, but the horror and the kills were really good and kind of reminded me of Halloween kills. In second place this year, we have Talk To Me which does that reveal my first place? Probably. Talk To Me was in the running for first place up until the next one. Um, and I really liked Talk To Me. I'm still waiting to buy it on DVD. I can only find it on Blu-ray. I don't know why they're not selling it on DVD. Anyway, but I was really impressed with Talk To Me and I wanna rewatch it. Like all the time I have an urge to rewatch it. So I'm just like waiting for it to be out on streaming or so I can buy a DVD of it because I want to rewatch it so bad. But this was A24's hit of the year, I think. And I hope it remains popular and keeps that like excitement from people because I remember when it came out, everyone was so hyped about it. And then I feel like the excitement's died down a little bit. So we'll see if it can maintain uh, a reputation and not get forgotten from this year. So in first place with five stars, the only movie to earn five stars for me this year was Saw 10. I had to do it. I had the amount of love that I felt for this. Like when I watched this movie, it was unlike any theater experience I had had this year so far, any movie experience. I was so excited. I want to relive that experience over and over again of seeing this movie in the theater for the first time again. I loved it so much. Again, you can watch my whole review on it, but I was shocked. I was so surprised at how good this movie ended up being. And I think even non-Saw fans would like this movie because it reads more of like a traditional horror movie than a Saw movie. And I think that's a good thing. I think it needed the revamp of the franchise. With that being said, Saw 11 was announced. However, it does have different writers and directors. So I'm nervous. I don't know if it's going to be great. And I don't know if it's gonna be like Spiral 2 or if it's gonna be right after Saw 10. We shall see. Tell me your expectations. There you have my best and worst ranking of 2023 for horror movies. What are your thoughts? Please make sure to leave a comment down below telling me your best and worst horror movies that you watched this year and just your general thoughts of the year as a whole when it comes to horror movies. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>